just a little runaway. Forty-seven years and still I'm on the run. Afraid of love, I'm keeping God at bay. Spending days in a nightmare ain't much fun. I am just a little runaway. Hello, everybody. Everybody. <laughs> Whoa, some healings going on. Massive, massive. And I know it's only my mind, so you're healing too, which is, it's a beautiful thing, but it's not the easiest thing I've ever done. Um, today, we have a special program, and I'm going to do, uh, I'm dating myself. I don't know, many of you may remember uh, back in the 60s or 50s or something, um, something called Fractured Fairy Tales, which was a particular favorite cartoon of mine. <laughs> and uh, so today we're going to go over my version of The Three Little Pigs. And um, <clears throat> it's really based on, uh, it, it really is a look at ego. And so I, I just want to read a couple of paragraphs out of the, the book um, on Ego Dynamics, and it's um, chapter 11, God or the Ego, and it's section 5, The Dynamics of the Ego. Um, let us begin this lesson in Ego Dynamics by understanding that the term itself does not mean anything. It contains the very contradiction in terms that makes it meaningless. Dynamics, in quotes, implies the power to do something. And the whole separation fallacy lies in the belief that the ego has the power to do anything. Oh, man. The ego is fearful to you because you believe this. Yet the truth is very simple. All power is of God. What is not of him has no power to do anything. And then this next paragraph. <laughs> you must recognize that the last thing the ego wishes you to realize is that you are afraid of it. For if the ego could give rise to fear, it would diminish your independence and weaken your power, all powers of God. Mm. Yet its one claim to your allegiance is that it can give power to you. Without this belief, you would not listen to it at all. How then can its existence continue if you realize that by accepting it, you are belittling yourself and depriving yourself of power? Oh my God. Okay, so the three little pigs, it's a fractured fairy tale through A Course in Miracles principles. Okay, I hope I can remember it. Okay, so the three little pigs. And they've been given a certain amount of money to build a house, okay? One decided to do straw, one did twigs, and one did brick. Okay, so <laughs> the first little pig in the straw house, the wolf, the ego. We're the pigs, by the way. I'll speak for myself. I'm one of the pigs. I'm all of the pigs. Anyway, the wolf, the ego, comes to the straw house and says, come out and let me eat you or I'm going to blow your house down. Well, he huffed and he puffed and he blew the straw to smithereens and the little pig ran next door to the house of the stick pig. Now, the straw house was the least expensive building material, so the, the pig decided to build his house out of straw because he still had money to pay for the kid's education and get a decent retirement. Well, now that's gone. So he runs over to the stick pig house, and the stick pig is going, oh God, should I let him in or let him get eaten? You know, I have enough money for the kid's education because I paid a little more for the sticks than he did for the straw. And if I let him in, that means I'm going to have less money and less room in the house. And you get the gist of it, okay? But he was codependent enough that he said, sure, come on in, we'll make room. 
So he invites the pig in, and then the wolf comes to the, the strict stick pig house, and he says, I'm going to huff and I'm puff and blow your house to smithereens. And I said, fine. And he did. <laughs> so the two little pigs ran to the next door neighbor's house who built it of brick, the most expensive building material, should provide all the safety from all the hazards of the world. And they, uh, and they knocked on the door and now the brick house pig is thinking, God, I spent all this money building a brick house. You guys were paying for your retirement, your college educations for your kids, and I spent all money on my brick house. Why should I let them in? But he was equally codependent and said, sure, come on in. I don't know why you had to do straw and stick, but you did, and I have brick, and you'll be safe. So they all moved into the brick cubicle. <laughs> <laughs> and they all, you know, were thinking, now we're safe. Well, the wolf came by and said, I'm going to huff and puff and blow your house down. And they kind of laughed, yeah, right, try, just try. And he didn't. He wasn't able to blow the house down, so they thought they were safe. So, <clears throat> now this is where <laughs> the real fractured part comes in. See, at this point, they're supposed to live happily ever after. And I'm thinking to myself, yeah, in an overcrowded brick cubicle with no money. Okay. But here's the gist. And this is what we find, I find in my mind all the time. The, the wolf is still whispering to me. The wolf is saying, come on out. Come on out. I have a beautiful, beautiful, you know, dinner waiting for you. Come out and I'll share it with you. And this is me listening to the ego at any given time. And the little pigs, ah, they, now they were smarter than even I am. And no, no, we're not buying it. Now this is the way, the, the, well, I'll share the ending for later, but you're getting the gist of this. This is ego dynamics. We think we have the power to protect ourselves. You know, if we spend enough money on the brick cubicle, we'll be safe. And those that, you know, squander their money on straw to make sure they have a retirement and the college education of their kids paid for, uh, you know, are stupid. I mean, we make all kinds of judgments in this arena. So now I'm going to kind of switch to how this even came into being because it's a parable of Calico that occurred one day here in Mexico. Um, I went to get groceries. Sounds like a kind of a non plus thing to do. I went to get groceries at a local uh, store, and um, I've known this for the past two years. There's a slaughterhouse right next to the grocery store, but never see any activity over there, and it's never really entered into my mind until this day. I come walking out of the store with my groceries, ready to load up and leave, and I hear some pig oinking, oink, oink, oink. And I look over at the slaughterhouse, and sure enough, I see this man walking behind three little pigs. Okay? And I'm thinking, already my mind is deep, deep in work. Oh my God, they're going into the slaughterhouse. Get out of here as fast as you can. So I'm loading up the car, trying to get out of the parking lot before this, <laughs> what I know to happen will happen. And before I even get in the car, there are, I saw the little pigs walk into a dark entry with the man following them, and they're oinking quietly. And then when they get into the, the, the building, there was blood-curdling squealing. And all I can, I don't know how long it went on for because it lasted in my head for a long time. And I'm getting into the car, frantic to get out of the parking lot, away from the squealing pigs. And I watched my mind. And this is the mind training. I went into my mind immediately going, okay, this is a dream. And I'm trying to get out of the parking lot as quickly as possible to prevent myself from suffering in the dream. You know, it's like building a brick house. Now I have to just back up a little. The day before, and it was the day before, I'm having bacon and eggs with a friend. And I looked at the bacon and I went, you know, bacon is the perfect food. <laughs> so here I'm getting an opportunity to really kind of play this one out. So as I'm driving out the parking lot, I'm watching my mind going, I, I just know I need to stay with what I'm thinking. What am I thinking? What am I thinking? And the, the 
thought through, flew into my mind, okay, now I've got to become a vegetarian again. I can't, I can't be with the suffering. You know, and then it leads on that I'm causing because I'm eating meat. I mean, you know, this is where the ego will take you into a very bad neighborhood very quickly. But I saw my decision, oh, I'm going to be a vegetarian again. And I immediately said, no, because it's not about form. It's never, I have no power over form. It's a thought. I'm having a thought and not to make any decisions on my own. <clears throat> so at that point, I knew I needed to join with a mighty companion to just hold the space while I let whatever this belief was that was surfacing. So I got back and Suzanne was there and, um, you know, I'm crying, <laughs> having a lot of emotions. I even threw up. I mean, I was making form very real. And I was able to express, I was having these thoughts and the beliefs were all right there. That suffering is possible, that there's loss, that I am responsible for anything on the planet. And it was bringing up all my codependency issues. I mean, everything was sh just flashing before my eyes. And I just joined with Suzanne kind of expressed and I thought I need to take some quiet time. So I took some quiet time, cried buckets, threw up several times. It was just basically me expressing what was stuffing on this belief of feeling that suffering and loss is possible. Because that's the, it's the ego desire for me to believe that suffering is possible and that I have any control to do anything about it. Like it matters whether I build my house with straw versus brick. It, it's, it's me giving my power away because the only power I have is the power of God. Let me do this without my glasses. All power is of God. What is not of him has no power to do anything. So all the, you know, and, you know, this, oh my God, I've had so many interesting insights in this parable for the past couple of weeks since it happened. And it's like, again, me attempting to control something, an outcome of something. If I have enough money, I can protect myself. If I can make sure the kids don't get on drugs, I can protect them. It's basically feeling like I have any, any, any control in this dream in this horizontal. It's insane. And it will continue to be insane until I wake up from it. And then all you guys disappear. <laughs> so it's kind of like, this is the self-study part of A Course in Miracles. It's not about what X, Y, or Z are doing. It's how, what am I interpreting that to mean? Where am I giving it my power? Because, and, and I, I, you know, I just, I'm going to plug the 30-day program because there's huge, huge growth and healing happening in that 30-day program. And one woman, without mentioning names, was able to catch her thought. In the middle of making her son wrong for something, she realized it was her mind and she dropped to her knees in the kitchen and started weeping. And that's healing. That's like really getting to the crux of, I need to rethink everything. Absolutely, bar none, everything. And it's like in this whole idea of, see, I was the codependent pig. I was always letting other pigs in going, well, I can alleviate suffering. I can make their lives easier. I'll give them money. I'll take care of them. And this happened just the other day. There was a retreat at La Casa and I went down to hug some people that were there at the retreat and I saw some of the um, volunteers and I, in my head, made them look tired. They look fatigued. Okay, that's what I was thinking about my, my mighty companions. Impossible. Impossible. And I just got this morning <laughs> from joining with Suzanne. It's like, oh, that was me and my fucking codependency again. I can somehow help them. 
and and you know I was going to offer to do something in order to alleviate their stress. I was going to let the little pig into my house because well I've got a house. They need a they need shelter and who but I can let them in. This is this whole structure ego dynamics that we have set up to alleviate suffering that is impossible. Suffering is impossible except in my mind if I make it so. And so this three little pigs thing, I was suffering as I was leaving the parking lot. And, <clears throat> and the first thought is I'm going to be a vegetarian. And I, you know, and if you're a vegetarian and <laughs> there are many out there, you know, take me to Spiri, you know, I'm still eating pork. And, you know, I decided that changing anything in form was not going to be helpful. And so there you go. And it's kind of like until we get to that level to see that we're, oh, you know, uh, Kirsten did a beautiful little segment um, while she's in Mallorca right now. And it was basically about all grievances are judgments that I must heal in my mind. And it was a short thing, but I really, I just so got, you know, my grievance was that pigs are killed, that any animal can be killed, that any human can be killed. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm still going deeper with it. I can feel it even as I'm speaking it. It's like, that's mine to correct. It's an error in my thinking. It's giving all my power to the wolf, to the ego, to say that this is possible. And the undoing of this, all I know is it's so deep. I'm, I don't know how deep this, this water is. But I do know that I'm willing to continue to challenge my thinking <clears throat> at any given time, which means, and I'm in the parking lot with squealing pigs in my head, for me to stop and just check in. What am I thinking? Where is my mind taking me? And it's usually going to take me to the dark side because that's all I know. That was the separation. I moved from the light to the dark. And so everything that I do is going to have to be challenged. And the codependency is just the flip side of, you know, the error. Oh, well, I can fix it for somebody else. I can make your life easier. <sighs> I mean, my whole life as a chiropractor was about me keeping up this wall of I can alleviate suffering. I can help you. I can't help anyone. I can't even help myself. I'm still hearing the squealing pigs in my head. Why? Why would you choose to do that? And that's where I keep going. And it, it, this keeps taking me deeper and deeper and deeper. And I'm so grateful to these three little pigs for showing up on my screen. The curriculum is, is complete. The script is written. Okay. It was for me to see these three little pigs have this experience to really take me into a whole new way of looking at it and uncovering the beliefs that are keeping this, this, this whole dream in place. There is not, I have no power in the dream. The only power I have is holding the truth in my head. The truth is there is no wolf. The truth is there is no house. <laughs> it's no threat to anything ever. But we live our lives terrified. And it's like, and it's for me, and this is the mind training that we're doing here in community that it blows me away on a regular basis. And I woke up clearing <clears throat> some thoughts of fear thoughts, body fear thoughts. And it was like, oh my God, when am I going to let this go? Well, you'll let it go when you let it go. That's not for me to figure out. That's in the future. In this moment of now, express the fear, express that which is on my mind. Let it out, because only until I let it out can I move beyond it. If I'm holding secrets of any kind, and that's a 30-day program again, and rethinking sickness was beautiful because people were really expressing 
deep, dark terror of dying or having to live in a certain form that wasn't what the form they wanted it to be. And I just offer these programs to you. <clears throat> and Living Miracles has many, many tools. I mean, Spiri. You know, if you're upset about the fact that I'm eating bacon, watching pigs get slaughtered, and continuing to eat bacon, take me to Spiri. Make me, you know, the upset. I'm fine with that. I don't mind. I'm doing my own version of it over here. It's like we've got to unravel all these ideas of the way it should be. The way it should look in the horizontal. We're trying to correct the dream. And, you know, and I, I've used this analogy before, but it's perfect here. You know, as a child, I remember having horrible nightmares. You know, the ones where you're running in slow motion and there's something behind you. You're not quite sure what it is, but it's moving a lot faster than you are. And you can't move any faster. Well, what do you do in those nightmares? You wake up. And that's what's being asked of me in this horizontal nightmare that I find myself out right now and the access to it and I'm again so grateful to David for holding this uncompromising truth and he is uncompromising there is nothing to fear period end of statement there is nothing to make wrong or correct except my mind when I'm having these thoughts and he's come up with levels of mind I mean I see Marg as the moderator. It's like, you know, well, just Google levels of mind, Google Spiri. I mean, it's all out there. And it's like, these are the tools that we use here for our mind training. And I cannot tell you the level that I've gone and none of it's fun. None of it's fun. It would have been easier for me to be a vegetarian <laughs> with the squealing pigs in my head. It's like, oh, that would have resolved everything. Okay, handled that one now. Now I can stabilize the horizontal again. Well, the reality is it doesn't matter what I do. The power is the power of God that I want to join in. It's not three little pigs or suffering of any kind in this horizontal. And I just, I invite you to take it on whatever's going on right now, whatever grievance you've got, you know, whether it's too cold or too hot or you know, you have four eyes, you know, whatever your grievance is that you would like to see differently, take that to Spiri. You know, start, do the 30 day program with us. We've got a very interactive Facebook group that's sharing. And as we share, everyone is, is brought, I mean, someone thanked me for moderating and I'm going, why? I'm getting just as much out of it as anybody else. It keeps, it keeps challenging me in my thinking. And I need to have my thinking challenged because I still think pigs can be slaughtered, that pigs can suffer, that anything can suffer. And I, I'm at the point now where I know the brick house isn't going to save me. I know the brick house isn't going to save me. And, and the IRAs and the <laughs> putting the kids in school and you know, doing everything to make, alleviate suffering and, and make it a better dream. Oh, yeah, this is probably not going to be helpful. Oh, thank you. Suzanne's sitting off to my right. <laughs> and, you know, there's, and there is a video that David did that was fabulous, and I didn't put this in, um, it may not be linked, because um, I think if you Google David Hoffmeister and Slaughterhouse or Slaughter, <laughs> it may pop up. But he had a retreat near a slaughterhouse. And there was a lot of conversation about it. And what he did was to go eye gazing, kind of being the light and seeing the light. And just makes me want to cry because this is, this is my lesson. I see suffering. I'm not holding the light. And all I can say is there is a way out of this and David is helping me see it right now. 
because the all power is power of God. That's the only power we have. It's the only place to stand in. And if I can't see the light in you, if I can't see the light in three little pigs running into a darkened entryway, then I'm in the error, not in the correction. And the training I'm doing right now is to continue, bring myself back, bring myself back, bring myself back. Get vertical, get vertical. And that's what David was doing at this retreat. He was holding the vertical. And there was a lot of fear. And he kept holding the vertical. And so that's my greatest wish in being in community is to get this skill strong so that I don't ever hear pigs squealing in my head. So that I don't ever see error in form. That I don't fear form of any kind, whether it's this form, your form, any form. And there's nothing to do, there's nothing to correct, there's nothing to fix or help. And if I see fatigue in another, guess whose fatigue it is? Mine. Because they don't exist. And so it's constantly bring, coming back, coming back, coming back. And that's the mind training we're doing here. And the hardest thing I've ever done and the most rewarding thing I've ever done. And um, yeah. So with all that being said, um, you know, how did this Three Little Pigs story end? That was, Suzanne asked me that today and it was perfect. So the little three little pigs are living in their brick cubicle thinking we're, we're hungry but we're safe and we're not following the guidance of ego. We'll just stay in here in our safe cubicle and slowly starve or kill each other because there's no room in the cubicle. I mean, that was pretty much where it left. And then there was a farmer that came, saw the wolf, killed the wolf because he's concerned about his pigs, his sheep, whatever. And the pigs lived happily ever after until the farmer decided he wanted bacon. <laughs> and there you go. There's the loop. <laughs> <laughs> and, and again, if you have trouble with this three little pig story and my version of the fractured fairy tale, oh, take me to Spiri. I, I'm sure it's been done before. I'm sure it'll be do it, done again. And it's like, see the turnaround for your life. What is it you're trying to protect or keep at bay or make okay and safe and secure in a horizontal world that is a nightmare? We call it a dream and it's never gonna end well. And no matter how much you build your brick house, it's not gonna matter. You're still baking. <laughs> so with that being said, I love you all so much. I love you all so much. My mighty companions that are doing the work. <laughs> We're doing this together, totally. I could not do this without you. Yeah, that's the healing. So until next, well, not next week. Oh, a little plug. Next week, we're doing an online retreat for prayer. And believe me, everything is prayer. What am I thinking? That's a prayer. What am I thinking? Well, that's a prayer. So join us in the retreat next weekend to find the solution, which is through prayer. So until next week, I love you guys. <laughs>